Where is my motivation? Chapter 6. So, I'm sure you must have heard motivation, discipline, action. These are all the words that we hear for personal development in every area of our lives. Yet we know that we are whole individuals, so our whole system works hand in hand. They coordinate it. We're not like broken parts that they work in isolation. So when we talk about motivation, do you always feel motivated? And if you don't, why is that? And it begs the question, why do we keep waiting to be motivated to get things done? So here I'm going to talk about what motivation is and how it differs in our approach to getting things done. But before we get started, I want to find out a little bit about you and I want you to ask yourself, do you doubt your ability to achieve goals that you set for yourself? Maybe not at all, rarely, sometimes, often, very often. Take notes of your response. You work even harder to achieve your goals after suffering a setback. Is that not at all? Is that rarely, sometimes, often, very often? And then the last one, I regularly envision the life I want, then I set goals and objectives to achieve it. Not at all, rarely, sometimes, often, very often. So here, let's talk about the do formula, do something formula. The do something formula. What does that mean? It means motivation is very flitting. It does not last long. It varies. It's emotional. It's all in our feelings. We're people of feelings and emotion. So if you're waiting on motivation, it could be so high and strong one minute. And the next minute is like, dun, dun, dun. So motivation really on its own doesn't do much. It is when you have a plan with your motivation, one that you don't need to be motivated to get it done, but you know how you're going to get it done. So let me ask you a few questions just to see if we understand this. So waiting for motivation to heat before you get started is the most efficient way to meet your goals. Is that a myth or is that a fact? Definitely a me. When you take one step at a time while enjoying small wins along the way, you will get all the motivation you need. Certainly a fact. You know, before I used to, because I, I, I'm usually very hard on myself and I like to see big goals achieved before I give myself a pat on my back. But very quickly I realized that the sooner I recognize small wins, no matter how small, it makes me feel good and it makes me want to press on and keep going. So that is certainly a fact. Small wins along the way. And that would even further motivate you. The last question. You can trick your mind into feeling your true times when you're unmotivated. Again, it's mindset. If you remember chapter one, it's all about the mindset, what we tell ourselves. So as I mentioned, motivation is not constant. Sometimes it's on a high and sometimes it's on a low. So strategies that we need to have that keeps it on a high all the time is what we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. Research can back us up on this, that action leads to motivation, not the other way around. So when our motivation dips and peaks through several stages, we know what we need to do. So the first stage is the rush, which is you decided you're going to get your goals no, done no matter what. Like for instance, there was a women's meeting at church and I planned I was going to go. But for some reason in the evening, I just felt so tired and I was like, I'm not going. I don't feel like it. And I was just sitting there. But very quickly I realized and I remembered why I needed to go. So I got up. I got in action. And then sure, sure. <laughs> Slowly but surely, I became motivated. The action stimulated me to do so. Now, let's put that into perspective in terms of our food. You know, we know that we want to have more energy. We know we want to sleep better. We know we want to lose weight, feel good in our skin. So that is the action that you need to take. Try and do a meal prep. You might not feel like it, but then 
you do it anyway and as you do it you create enjoyable moments whether with your family or or by yourself and that's what i do i don't feel like shopping my kids will tell you i do not feel like shopping i don't like shopping but shopping for the weekend and doing meal prep will actually save me going through the drive through and getting on healthy foods every day of the week as well of course saving money in my pocket so stage two reality strikes so after a while you know you say okay i'm not going to eat any meat no cheese i'm just going to eat healthy but then all of a sudden what happens is all over it's everywhere so if you are already prepared right you'll be able to resist that temptation stage three negative thought so you've been at it for a while and you're becoming less motivated each day so what do you do you have to pick up your why you have to go back to why you're doing it you got to re remember the little wins remember how it makes you feel so if you remember how you feel when you eat healthy and eat well compared to when you don't eat well then that should trigger the reason why you need to move and take actions so that is so important. Motivation won't work, but goal setting will. And when we say goal setting, we're talking about smart goals. We've all heard that before. Motivation won't get you to the end point because it is short term. It is inconsistent and it's not durable, right? So it might not help you get to where you're going in the long run. But with your smart goals, though, you will get that long term effect. So let me give you an example of what I'm referring to as SMART goals, which you probably already heard before. The SMART goals are goals that are so specific about what you're trying to achieve. It's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant, and it's time bound. So all of that together makes it possible. So you don't have that up and down spikes that occur with motivation with the smart goals when you've accomplished you know step by step you feel accomplished and then you get your dopamine levels high and then you move to the next thing you get excited about what you're able to accomplish now let me give you an example so i will bring my lunch to work instead of eating out for four days this week all right give yourself one day to eat out so how are you going to get that done you have to be very specific i'm going to eat out less you are specific when and how often you would avoid it. So four days out of five. Measurable. Your success is measured by sticking to your plan for four days. Now, I want to say something here. If for any reason you, you don't make it exactly, but you're close, that's still progress. That is better than not even having a, a smart goal. Achievable with meal planning exactly so how are you going to get those for you can't just say you're going to eat you're going to bring your food right to work you have to have a plan when are you going to make it you have to look at your schedule everything is figure outable i promise maybe like what i do in my home fridays i, I grocery shop saturdays we wash and put away you know chop whatever and friday and sundays then we cook we bash cook and we make it fun after church we come home everybody changes off their clothes we have some nice music and we get it done everybody decides what they're going to pick their protein their veggies and what else makes a complete meal so protein veggie and the whole grains um carb so we have to make it achievable right and we have to plan beforehand you have to be intentional Relevant, healthy eating is relevant to your weight loss plan, is relevant to you feeling good, is relevant to you reducing your blood pressure medicine, relevant to keeping you from being a diabetic. And then it has to be time bound, right? So you're gonna just explore this for one week. Let's see how it works. Maybe one week, just try and drink water, be more intentional about your water. So that is how you make smart goals. Another one is you wanna quit on healthy foods. So how are you gonna do that? specific it says it doesn't specify so this is what I'm, I'm i'm actually trying to say so i would quit unhealthy foods right that's all you said how is that how are you going to do that it's not specific so it doesn't tell you which kind of unhealthy foods you're going to quit measurable it's not clear how long you're going to do that for achievable is so ambiguous that you less likely to achieve i'm going to quit unhealthy foods 
okay relevant why are you going to quit unhealthy foods you're just going to quit unhealthy foods what is the why tied to it and there's no time bound to it so some people will tell you why do i have to put a time to it yeah because that way you see if you just make if they say if you stand if you if you don't stand for anything you'll fall for everything so if you don't have a time bound to it if it's not working you're like you know what forget this i'll just start again another day so you always want to put a time to it. So I want you to go ahead and practice this. I want you to take a pen and paper, practice, put a goal that you want to achieve, make it smart, and, and, and begin. All right? So I'm going to end with just this one question. The best goal is the one that is small, easy to accomplish, or big enough to keep you busy for a while. What do you think the answer is? definitely easy to accomplish because you have everything that will make it happen for you another question you recently started exercising more however it's peak season at your workplace and you might not have time for the gym for a while which of the following is best taking a break from exercise until you have time for it or setting a goal to incorporate physical activity into your day like taking stairs getting up and stretching yeah, I know you guys are smart. I know you figured it out. It's certainly setting a goal to make it happen. Every movement counts. It is not all or nothing. It is whatever you can do that adds up. And then we have you love dining out, but often makes make unhealthy food choices. You want to develop a healthy diet without giving up your love for new restaurants and adventures. So the smart goal will be one, eat out, but order salads more often. Or two, find a way to quit eating out entirely. Is that possible? And then three, eat out once a week and always talk to the server to find out low calorie options on the menu. I'm sure you got that. Definitely the last option. And then the last question I have here, I will measure my portions every day in order to cut my calories from 2200 to 1800 and lose weight. Using a smart, what, what here is the M in this goal? Is it the measure my portions? Is it in order to lose weight? And is it from 2200 to 1800? That is the M, the measurable. So yeah, if you guessed it, that's correct. It's a number, right? You've put a measure to it. So set, work, achieve, and repeat. That's how it goes. Set, work, achieve, and repeat. And that way, we won't have to rely on motivation because with a smart plan, we've got it all figured out. Thank you for listening. Know that you deserve to live at your finest because you are worth it. Take care. God bless.